what really gets my dick hard is so fucking what Welcome to Metal Up Your Podcast. I'm Ethan Luck. And I'm Clint Wells. And this is episode number 42. And this week we are talking about the very long, however, very short in track length Beyond Magnetic EP. Mm, it's a paradox. It's very long and very short. Yeah. It's, it's two things in one, which is really hard to do nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Almost impossible physically. Yeah. I don't know anybody else that can do it. Um, I had a pretty good time listening to this record this last week. Yeah. So, yeah same here, man. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things when it came out, I was excited for some extra songs from those sessions. Um, and just to hear, cause that's not really a common thing they do. They might record, you know, some on purpose B sides or cover songs, you know, IE bread fan and the Prince and stuff like that. But you know, you don't often hear like, Oh, here, here's a, a song that you never heard off of master of puppets that they did in that same session, you know? So it was a nice treat after death magnetic to hear these four songs, something extra that they gave to the fans. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm, and I'm mildly ashamed to say, I, I I checked it out when it came out, and I don't remember disliking it, but I've not really given it a lot of love and time. So yeah, yeah. I, 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 before we decided to do this episode, I, I would definitely listen to it here and there. And um, man, the more I dove into it, the more I can definitely say, I almost wish that these were these were just on the record, and it was an yeah. even longer album. I think two of them definitely could slash should have been. Um, yeah, I agree. We'll get into that when we break it all down. We want to just yeah. briefly mention, oh, we're doing this new thing. We're, we've opened back up the old iTunes review contest. And this time, right. instead of sending pics to everybody or koozies or whatever, uh, Ethan and I thank you, thanks to the generous donations of our patrons, we've bought the new upcoming Master of Puppets Deluxe box set. Correct. Which is badass. It comes with 10 CDs and three vinyls and a lithograph and a cassette tape and a booklet. and So we've got might- one of those coming out. I might what? leave. I might leave a review for ourselves just to see if I can win it. Yeah. <laughs> what if we draw the name? So we're drawing the name at the end of November. What if we draw it and it's Ethan Luck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's weird. It's Clint Luck. What an interesting name. <laughs> so for those for those of you wondering about details about that, if you've already left a review, uh, you're eligible to win this thing. So yes, correct. Uh, the the box that comes out is being delivered to my house on November 10th, and awesome. uh, we're, we're going to pick the name randomly there's nothing you can do to win favor it's going to be totally random yeah uh we're going to do that at the end of november it's going to be kind of like a christmas gift and we just thought that'd be fun um yeah absolutely and 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 honestly speaking of of that that box set if uh, any of you guys have listened to speak and destroy by my friend ryan downey he's also running a similar contest but he's given out the kill them all box set so we just need to get old Tom Quee over at Alpha Metallica to do Ride the Lightning, and then you can listen to all of our podcasts, and you can be the winner of all three of these luxurious boxes. Exactly. It's almost like we're about to start teaming up without really talking about teaming up. <laughs> it's like we're going to start like an intramural volleyball team and just take it around the nation. Yeah, yeah. Maybe even maybe even North America, maybe even Canada. Oh yeah. Oh hey. Hey hey. You like volleyball? Eh? <laughs> so that's sorry, what that is. Sorry. So, <laughs> sorry. So if you go leave us that review, you are eligible to win this box set. It's just a fun, it's just a fun way for us all to get what we want here in life. Yeah, exactly. And as as you guys have listened since day one, you know we've we've really only not given away things and done an iTunes review contest for only about a month. You know, after the pit contest was over, we couldn't so, quit that <clears throat> contest. Couldn't quit it. But you know, as you know, we've been giving away you know picks and patches and stickers and all that stuff. So we, why not up the ante, have something like this box set to give out to you guys? And uh, yeah, we hope you leave us a good review and uh, enter your name. And we're going to be doing contests like this, I think, periodically throughout the year. So it's all just fun. It's fun sauce. Yeah. So the patrons, here's what the Patreon <clears throat> is. It's a place where you can go, uh, where everybody knows your name. <laughs> <laughs> where everybody knows your name. Uh, it's in Boston. Um, no, uh, it's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. There's all sorts of different tiers of how you can give back to the show, if you're so inclined, if you would like to. And it makes things like that box set possible. Uh we got three new patrons, and I want to list their names. Julian Cueva G. Canton, Elizabeth Gleaton, and Fernando Imming. 
uh, are our new patrons. Thanks, Thank guys. you, guys. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. At the and very again, least, you get a shout, shout out on the show. But tell yeah. them about the uh, tell them about the old EP sauce. Ooh, the old the old EP is coming along nicely. It, it is almost done. Uh, I just left to go back on the road, so I'm going to be kind of tidying up my three songs while on the road and sending them to our good buddy Nathan Thomas to mix. But yeah, one of the things you can do, I believe, it's if if you pledge five dollars or more, you get access to a six song cover EP by me and Clint, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool. I, I did the Fred Ends of Sanity, Sanitarium, and the Unforgiven Three. And Clint did. Uh, I did Fixer, The Outlaw Torn, and Low Man's Lyric. And I've decided, I've also done uh, a cover of The Unnamed Feeling. So even if you only pledge a dollar, you'll get The Unnamed Feeling. But I think you got to pledge five or more to get the whole EP. Correct. But, but yeah, you guys can go on there, patreon.com slash metal up your podcast and read through all the different tiers of things you can get and be a part of the show and help us out and we help you out. And it's just a big collaborative team metalla effort here. Yeah, it's fun. It's just fun shit. And, and who doesn't got- love fun shit? I mean, I love the shit out of fun shit. No joke, man. Hey, how about we get to some emails? <laughs> All right, uh, let's do emails. Uh, okay, we get emails every week. We get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them. Somehow, through the miracle of science, we whittle it down to 10. If you want to have your email read on our show, you can email us at show at gmail.com. You want to start us off? I would love to start us off. Our first email is from Chris Maffet, Maffi, 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 Maffi. Maffy. He says, what's up, Brother Jack dudes? <laughs> Never heard that one, but hey, what's up, Brother Jack dude yourself? Uh, I've spent the last month binge listening through all the episodes of the podcast, and I just want to say how much I love, uh, how much I've enjoyed it. I, I'm really glad I decided to type Metallica into the podcast, into Pocket Casts. That's another app. I'm assuming that's Android. Um, mm. Because um, I've been a huge Metallica, on a big Metallica kick lately, and you guys have kind of made my guide through rediscovering one of my favorite bands ever. Awesome. As a musician and someone who really, uh, who's really into audio slash music production, I really love when you guys geek out and get technical. Definitely keep that up. We shall. Um, here, this is really interesting right here. He says, as a, as, and being a big wrestling fan, I always get a kick out of the Hulk Hogan impressions, um, but especially when you guys play clips, clips from the Hulk Rules album. I actually do a podcast about the music of pro wrestling. Very cool and very unique. And a while back, we did an episode reviewing that album, which was dot, 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 quite an experience. I'm sure it was. Check out the pump, brother. Wanna not? What's up, dude? I was born, I was bred, I was southern fed. Got a crazy idea running through my head. California is a place that I had to be. Then a speech in the pit really set me free. Oh, yeah. Check yeah. Out the pythons, baby. Would you look at that? Hey, check out the pythons, baby. Um... And in the spirit of Metallica, the most recent episode we recorded is dedicated to Metallica and the various instances their music is being used in wrestling. He ends the email by saying, anyway, I just want to thank you two for the countless hours of entertainment. It's nice looking forward to Mondays for once. Chris from Long Island, common New Jersey. And by the way, the podcast that he's talking about where he talks about the music of professional wrestling is called Music of the Mat. Yeah, and I actually went and listened to the Hulk Rules episode today. It's pretty funny. I, it's, yeah. it's it's Chris and, and a, a co-host. I can't remember the co-host name. Maybe Andrew. Maybe maybe Bartholomew. I really yeah, don't know. They're both from New Jersey. It's all we know. Um, and uh, I guess they're big wrestling fans. But they they break this. They kind of do a track by track the way that Ethan and I do on our records. And uh, yeah, they treat they treat it very seriously. Like they they really take a look at the lyrics. They take a look at the <laughs> at the music. That's and, awesome. Uh, it's pretty funny. So it's called Music of the Mat. I would recommend checking it out. And thanks, Chris, for the email. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Lewis Lima writes, "Hello, my friends, Clinton Ethan. It's Lewis from. Am I? Is it?" Louis, is that right? I think Louis or Luis. Luis, it's Louis. I'm gonna say Luis because it sounds yeah. sexier. Well, he's from he's from Brazil. Oh, it's Luis from Brazil, and I want to say thank you for the pics that you sent me. Yeah, so uh, my wife actually did that while I was out on the road. I I just put him in an envelope, and I was like, I don't know how much this is gonna cost, but we're sending him to Brazil <laughs> today. So I guess they made it. That's good. Thank you for the pics that you sent me. Much love, respect, and thanks to you and your work on this podcast and fan base. I hope the podcast never ends, and when you come to Rio de Janeiro, I'll buy you a beer. 
Keep up the good work and keep bleeding Metallica. Luis Lima. Thanks, dude. Oh, th- thank you, Luis. Yeah, our, our beer tab is, is going international now. Pretty awesome. Um, We've still yet to actually ha- meet someone for a beer, haven't we? Well, you know what's funny is I'm actually recording right now in Denver, Colorado. Hey, Lori Laker. Um, Lori. Yeah, and so I've been super busy all day, like seeing friends and one of the bass players in my old band. And so if I have time tonight, I might hit him up and, and uh, see if he might want to meet, meet up for a beer. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll, we'll cash in on the first one. I guess I'll just be over here sobbing. Drinking Naked your wine and, coolers. And, uh, drinking drinking, uh, drinking Franzia in the goddamn shower. <laughs> just shitting and crying. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Shitting and crying. Wow. I like how you were like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Been there, man. <laughs> yeah, you um, are. Right. Anyways, moving on. Our next email comes from uh, Dustin uh, Enox. Um, hey guys, first off, congrats on the sex, eh, success of the podcast. Congrats, in, congrats on the sex of the podcast. <laughs> And by the way, we're not, sh- we're not sure what the sex of the podcast is. Let me start that one over. Hey, guys. Yeah. First, of, first off, congrats on the success of the podcast. I've tuned in every week since the fourth episode. Uh, some of the topics you guys discuss, uh, only real Metallica fans understand. I've been a Metallica fan since I was seven due to my dad always listening to their records. And their sound got my attention from, uh, from then on, except for St. Anger, of course. Uh, I've seen Metallica twice, the first time in 2004, and then just recently at Rock on the Range Festival. Very cool. Um which is the best show I've ever witnessed. My favorite album, if I had to pick, would be Ride the Lightning, but I feel it, that is a rotating answer because um, I like all their albums except the fucking headache called St. Anger. <laughs> mm. uh, don't worry, we'll get to that episode. Um, hopefully you guys know what I uh, know what you're doing. Uh, um, hopefully you guys... Um, no, we, we don't. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what we're doing. Um, hopefully you guys know that what you're doing uh, is appreciated, and thank you so much. P.S. Clint, stay away from the Four Locos when you're in Ohio. Those goddamn things belong to the devil. I can't help it, man. I, I, I'm from Alabama. There's a bit of redneck in me. And when I go into a store and there's a 14% can of alcohol for a dollar, like 60. Yeah, that's a good deal. There's just, it's just something in me that just has to buy it. It's and a it's steal, like, man. But the, have you ever had these, Ethan? Uh, no, no. I actually value the health of my heart. <laughs> there, well, when you pour them out, because I often will drink like five sips and then either not be doing drink anymore or do yeah. something else. But when you pour it out, it's like ecto cooler. It, I mean, it looks like poison. <laughs> it's, it probably is poison in a can. Carbonated poison. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Dustin Enox. That's a pretty bitchin' last name. Yeah, it totally is. Dustin Enox. Unless it's Enoch. Enoch. Enoch's Enoch. All right. Enoch's uh, our next Enoch's. email's... From our friends over at the old single podcast theory. Oh, yeah. Hey, bro- hey, brothers. I watched Who the Fuck Is That Guy on Netflix a couple days ago and really liked Michael. Then I heard your interview with him and I fell in love. What an incredibly genuine, sweet, funny dude. Uh, we agree. He we says, totally agree. I got choked up when Michael was talking about Cliff. I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about Cliff before from a personal angle like that. And I love how he kept saying that he wanted these bands to, quote unquote, be a part of his life. What an awesome way to think about it instead of just as some band he wanted to sign. I also love hearing him talk about the 590 ADP and Justice since there's not a ton of stuff out there about those albums, which are my favorites. I hope there's a part two someday. Like you guys, I could listen to someone like that talk music for hours on end. Thanks for another great episode. Brad Blazik from the old single podcast theory. Oh, yeah. If you like Pod Jam, go Pod Jam. What is my problem today? Jeez. I like Pod Jam. Pod Jam I really rules, do. man. <clears throat> hey, brother, I've heard Pod Jam. They're pretty sick. <laughs> Um, if you haven't heard single podcast theory, it's an all Pearl Jam podcast done by our friend Brad Blazik and Brad Lyons. It's really awesome. And it's really good. I, I listen every week and it's real similar to our show. So if you guys are Pearl Jam fans, you're really going to love that shit. It's, uh, yeah. Again, it's Pod Jam. <laughs> Pod Jam. Great band. Gosh, you know what it is? The altitude here in Denver, it's gotten me my head a little spinny and I'm just like... You know, you do got to be... Because you wouldn't have lunch with a bud. Like when you're out there at those high altitudes, you got to drink differently, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, I'm not drinking right now. I'm drinking water just to stay hydrated for this. You got to you got to do heroin a little differently out there. Yeah, exactly. The yes, yes, totally. All right. Thanks, Brad Blazik and the Thank single you, podcast Brad. theory. Yeah, pod jam. Go pod jam. You wait, pod uh, jam. <laughs> Our next email is from Sanglish sixteen. Hi, Clint and Ethan. Another rad episode. How cool is Michael? I like the down to earth and heli- how down to earth and hilarious that guy is. I'm loving the podcast and spreading the word as well. Well, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Cheers again for this cool conversation with an a r legend. I loved how fearless and underrated Michael was slash is with his career path. A great inspiration to all, all us as musicians, artists, music lovers, etc. Horns up, Sean. 
No, Thanks, Sean. Nice. That's some really good, uh, that's some very nice things to say about Michael, and, and we can't agree more, man. That we had a blast talking to him, and we have since, you know, texted slash emailed him a little bit, and uh, he's been really stoked on the response of that episode we did with him. Yeah, he, he actually called me yesterday, and he want he wants me to send him, like, every bit of merch we have. <laughs> that's I awesome. I want the t-shirt, I want the sticker, I want the koozie, he want, he, you know. <laughs> I want the koozie. He does. All right, uh, Chad Pollock writes, Gents, the anticipation about your St. Anger review mimics the anticipation I felt for the album itself. No pressure, but I hope your review isn't as big a letdown as the album was. Well, it's going to sound better than the album. I can tell you it that It will much. sound better. I mean, the fidelity un- of the un- recording we, will be better. <laughs> unless we insert, like, every time we say I, it's like a king. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know, That's you know, a you know what? Idea. You, you, you know what? Clint, recently, King been listening to Saint Anger a lot, and King <laughs> think it still sounds like garbage. <laughs> Maybe it's just you saying King would be better than even adding that than the actual sample. Okay, I'll work on that. Are you saying Are you saying Ting or King? King. I was a King or Ting. King. One, ting. one of the two is fine. He says to my point. Uh, to my point, as you drill down into it more, aside from the sonic issues. The album's way too bloated. The songs are much longer than they need to be, and the lyrics repeat way too often. The songs are of epic length without epic content. This could have been an epic punk hard rock anthem. Bail on the worst two or three songs, reduce the overall length of the songs, add a bit of the ear candy that Kirk parts yeah. uh, that were cut down on the rinse repeat. Oh, cut down on the rinse repeat lyrics, and it could have been fucking awesome. Like 35 to. Th- th- I don't know how he landed on this number. 35 to 37 minutes of all those great riffs and quote-unquote healthy anger, and it would have fucking rocked. I generally agree with everything he's saying. Um, yeah. I think you all are going to be a bit surprised by some of my thoughts about St. Anger. But um, the problem here is that there's no consensus on... He says bail on the worst two or three songs. I mean, I'm taking the pulse on St. Anger on the forums and elsewhere. No one really agrees what those two or three bad songs are. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I could probably pick two to three songs I would take off of it, but I could yeah, also sure. probably pick 10 songs I take off of it. So <laughs> wait, how many songs are on there again? <laughs> uh, I think nine. No. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you know, this is all stuff where we're definitely going to try to get into in that St. Anger episode, sure. which, which will be in the next few weeks, I believe. Um, uh, I just got back on the road. And so we thought, well, let's do, uh, uh, beyond magnetic just, you know, cause we're kind of getting back into that remote recording world. But yeah, don't don't worry, uh, Chad. We will definitely uh, we'll get to that episode, and and maybe we can whittle it down and make it a punk rock record. I don't know. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks, man. Uh, next email is from our longtime listener and good friend Jean Froman, also a patron of the show. Thank also you, a Jean. patron of the show. Yes, thank you. Um, and she's also lately on Instagram been posting like old photos of her from high school and stuff. It's been pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, um, nice. She says, hey, she says, hey, hey guys, I recently turned a coworker of, of mine onto your podcast. He loves it, and, now, and he's now going back and listening to all the episodes. I was chatting with him today, and he thought it would be cool to do an episode about the bands that Metallica is helping to raise slash bring up as a part of the next generation of metal slash rock. Thanks again for the great episode with the logo from Gene. Thank you, Gene. Uh, that's a good That's a good idea. I mean, um, well, who would those bands be? I mean, would it be like Volbeat and Lamb of uh, God, like the people they take on tour? It'd probably be the people that it maybe more currently take on tour because I mean, back in the day, you can't say like, "Oh, look, they helped bring up Guns and Roses," you know. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's tough. It's tough to say what the next generation is when Metallica has spanned three generations. Well, I know, but I know, th- and I know they're really big fans. Like, I know that you know James is a big fan of Ghost. They had yes, Ghost at totally. the Orion Festival. James is a big fan of uh, what's that band that starts with a G? Everyone loves them. I can't say it. Gojira. Go, there you go, Gojira. Yeah. yeah, they love those dudes, and, and they're Volbeat fans, and yeah. maybe that's what they mean. That would be fun to talk about. That it would be cool, you know. I mean, I guess yeah, they're they're more saying uh, her, she, her coworkers saying more specific to metal, but I mean, you know, obviously you got like James that has such a wide taste in music. You know, they had you know Gojira to Rocket from the Crypt on Orion and stuff like that. Right. So. Um, but yeah, that's a really cool thing to think about. And I, is it uh, episode worthy? I'm not really sure. Maybe we can do a revisited or something. A revisited, but, uh, yeah. I think yeah, so too. Yeah, well, 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 let us let us think about it. Thanks, Gene. Thank you, Gene. The Gene Meister. The Genester. <laughs> Steamroller action. We haven't heard from this guy in a while. Uh, Steamroller action writes, "Hey guys, I listened to the Reload episode last night, an album I've never heard before in its entirety, which is." fascinating he says and i'm listening to it again right now i can't say i love it but i sure don't hate it at all and i'm enjoying it for what it is yes the alice in chains influence is definitely there i think the coughing at the end of bad seed is a reference to the beginning of sabbath sweetleaf now 
I am going through a massive Sabbath thing for the really kind of the first time in my life. I've always loved them. Yeah. And had, I always had Paranoid and always had Ozzy's 80s shit, but I'm like deep, deep into the 70s Sabbath stuff. And yeah, it's good stuff. He is right. That sweet leaf cough is almost identical to the cough in Bad Seed. So yeah. He goes on to say another thing from the Reload episode. I have to defend Kill 'em All lyrics after your multiple bashings. The full lyric from Kill 'em All is, We'll never stop, we'll never quit, because we're Metallica. He says, Number one, that line has helped keep me going through a lot in the 33 years since I first heard it. Number two, I believe it's kept the band going and it's defined them. Number three, you'll likely already know this, but when they play Whiplash Live, James sings, We'll never stop, we'll never quit, because you're Metallica. So there, winky face. <clears throat> well, I mean, here, and here's the thing we've talked about this a lot in previous episodes with lyrics. They can mean different things to different people. And obviously, in this case, to steamroll action, it means a lot to him, and it's gotten him through a lot, a, lot, a lot of stuff. And we agree with all your points here. Of course, it's gotten the band through their whole career. I mean, that's that was almost like a mission statement for them back then, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, honestly, you know, we were mostly kind of poking fun at, you know, that No Laugh to Leather going to kick some ass tonight. Yeah. It, it was more of their fascination with leather. Which yeah, is that. Funny. And I think uh, we can now confirm that they did, however, kick ass that night. <laughs> right. But the night in question, they did kick ass. So which, Yeah, they which did. Which is good. In leather. Uh, and we can also confirm that that night that they were Metallica. <laughs> we can. And if you haven't heard, they're still together. They're still Metallica. <laughs> yeah, they haven't stopped and they haven't quit yet. So oh, yeah. it's, it's pretty good. Mission statement uh, right. still going. Uh, well, thank, thank you, you Steamroll Action. You, would you say that we just got steamrolled a little bit? Uh, yeah, we got steamrolled steamrolled for sure. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> You've been steamrolled, brothers. <laughs> Thanks, steamroller action. Thanks, bud. Uh, next email is from Fernando Emming, who is also a brand new patron. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Fernando. Uh, he says, hey, dudes, my name is Fernando Emming from New York City, New Jersey, uh, but born and raised in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That is a beautiful, beautiful place I've been there, uh, which, of course, is also New Jersey. Uh, I've been listening to the Metallica since I saw the, uh, the entertainment video on MTV. I was 11 and I remember asking my parents to buy me that Metallica record. Funny enough, they bought me Injustice for All instead. I could not stop listening to that tape. It is my favorite album. Really hope for a 30 years tour next year. Fingers crossed. I think all of our fingers are crossed for some kind of tour, some something yeah, special. I've the even, the I've box even, set. Yeah. I've got well, my you, fingers crossed and I've got my butt crossed for that. Yeah, I, I've got you my, ever, che- my cheeks are crossed. Man. You ever done that? <laughs> you ever oh, crossed yeah. your butt? Okay, doing it, I'm doing it right now until that shit gets released. <laughs> um, <laughs> been uncomfortable cramping up a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, Fernando goes on to say, also, I've been to around 30 concerts. The first was 1993 and probably the best one at Webster Hall last year. Well, our friend Gene Froman was there. Yeah. And so was Sarah and Pete. Yeah. Yeah. There was yep. a, good, a good Metal Pure Podcast crew there. Uh, yeah. Little did they know they were a part of our crew back then. Um, wah, 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 wah. We got you. I felt uh, like that warranted an evil, evil villain laugh. <laughs> 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 He goes on to say, I was also fortunate to win Met Club meet and greet in 2009, one of the last uh, that uh, that James actually showed up, and I was able to meet Jason as well when he was touring with his band Newstead, which, by the way, you should listen to his album, really good, uh, 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 and Torben during the Orion Festival. He met Torben. That's great. Oh, cool. You know, I remember this boy from <laughs> Sao Paulo, Brazil, great and full of life, and I invited him aboard my carpet. That's great, Torben. Thank you for and sharing that. And we flew that. around the Orion Festival. Yes, we went and saw Rocket from the Crypt, and we saw um, Gojira. <laughs> <laughs> and my son Lars had some artwork hanging up, too. My son Lars. <laughs> yes, my son is Lars. He plays the drums. He plays these drums in Metallica. Have you heard of them? They will not quit or stop. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> oh, this is fun. Fernando, that's fun to say. Um Fernando goes on to say, just want to thank you all. Thank you for coming up with the podcast. <laughs> I met this boy, Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Man. You're man. such a nice boy. Church giggles during the emails. This is good. Um, so he goes on to say, just want to thank you for coming up with the podcast. You guys totally make me feel like I'm a part of the conversation. Totally, for sure. Um, I'm the head chapter of the New York City militia. Whenever you're in New York City, New York, not not dirty Jersey. Let me know when beers and pizza are on me. Anyways, thank you. Uh, thank you again and keep going. You have no idea how much. Not only me, but many others appreciate what you guys are doing. Metal up your ass. Well, Fernando, cool. thanks so much for your story, man. That's awesome. And... Um, Gosh, yeah. Uh, we, uh, you know, we have listened to news said stuff. It is really cool. It's not anything that really grabs me, and I'm like, wow, I have to listen to this all the time. But it's some good, solid metal. It's good. 
It's yeah, it's like I watched like the whatever the music videos they put out for his record heavy metal music. <clears throat> pretty pretty killer riffs. Yeah, Good definitely. Riffage. Oh yeah. Um, I do need to sit down and give it some more time, though. I really do. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Fernando. It's always good to hear from these uh, these chapter heads who like the show. That's great. Yeah, man. I love um, it. Our last email is from St. Matthew. He writes, Clint and Ethan, these past two James Hetfield episodes are absolutely amazing, and I want to thank you for all that you do. It wasn't until the most recent episode that I thought to do my own top five riffs thrown together from songs that, as far as I know, were written primarily or entirely by Papa Het. Number five, Harvester of Sorrow. Number four, uh an odd submission, Shoot Me Again, from St. Adudu. Number three, Don't <laughs> Tread on Me. Number two, Lipper Messiah. Number one favorite riff, Ronnie. Whoa, dude. Which which is a badass riff, I gotta admit, but number yeah. one. Number one, wow, that's bold, my friend. That was just a clip of the record it's, right there. It's got, the that, that, that riff has got some <clears throat> swagger to it, man. It's, oh, it, dude, it's, it's one of my favorites on load, for yeah. sure. Um, oh, sure. He says, "He says honorable mention for nothing else matters. A minimalistic acoustic masterpiece of a riff and a song. I agree. Yeah, the finger stylings and all that really pretty classical sounding stuff. It's pretty masterful. It's pretty. Yeah, it, I think and so. It's actually yeah. pretty. It's actually pretty strange. If you it is, yeah, it. for sure. He says it was tough to make the list, but as Clint pointed out, it's a bit more exciting or contentious with only five to rank. Plus, it's a slippery slope going for the big songs because many of them were written by Kurt Cliff or, as Ethan found out, Jason with Blacken. <laughs> Blacken would have been my number one. Anyway, you two are the best, and you remain one of the best podcasts. Cheers. Thanks, St. Matthew. Hey, listen, St. Matthew. I knew Jason wrote it. I just had a brain fart, my friend, all right? He just farted on his brain. Yeah, man. I was like, and then black and... Oh, shit. That was Jason Newstead. Oh, I just <laughs> farted on my brain. <laughs> okay. What's that What's that guy? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's almost bordering like butthead. I don't even want to... I don't, I don't want to be the guy that's doing Beavis and, Beavis and Butthead impressions, but I don't know. I'm developing a new character. I'm in Denver. Maybe it's like a stoner guy or something. Like, it sounds like a guy man. on Reddit, to be honest with you. Hey, man. I'm on fucking Reddit, man. It's fucking cool. <laughs> Fucking Reddit, man. I did talk shit to Metallica fans. And fuck. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> well, there's the emails, everybody. All right, there go the emails. Well, I think it's about time to talk about a little EP called Beyond Magnetic. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. It's four songs. They're some of the longest songs of Metallica's catalog. Yeah, uh, I mean, four songs I, is clocking in at almost 30 minutes here. Yeah, and I, I believe that, uh, is it just a bullet away? One of them is about eight minutes long. Oh, no, no, it's that Rebel of Babylon. That's Rebel of Babylon song. is really long, yeah. Uh, so we're going to get into this. There's a lot of great riffs, a lot of great stuff to talk about. The housekeeping crap of it is the same as Death Magnetic, because they we all know this, right? They come from the same sessions. So yep. produced by Rick Rubin, engineered by Greg Fiddleman. Oh, Greggy. It, and um, they made a point to say that these are rough mixes. Which uh, sure. I just, gotta, but I just gotta say, well, they kind of sound like Death Magnetic to me. And Death Magnetic do, kind of is roughly mixed. It is roughly mixed, but I mean, I really feel like these, to me, sound a bit better. Yeah, I, I was wondering that too. I think they do. And I, I think maybe because they were rough mixes, they didn't spend as much time on them. And maybe they were actually, I'm not positive, but maybe they were mastered separately. Well, <clears throat> or actually because they were rough mixes, they were actually probably mixed quieter because that was the big, you know, uh, deal with that record and why people well, were complaining about the audio yeah. quality was because it was mixed too loud before it went to mastering. I know that when I was, because I, um, I don't know if you did this, but I kind of tried to go through and see where they might fit on the record if we included them. And they are quieter songs. I don't know if they were not mastered or if they're mastered differently or what, but. Uh, probably um, mastered a little differently, but. Um, I, I, don't, I don't get why when they were going to actually release it, why not have it mixed, you know? Like, why not just full on mix it? Because it's a legitimate EP. It is, yeah, and I mean, they can call it a rough mix. I mean, to me, I think it sounds good. I think it's, I think it honestly sounds a little bit better than yeah. what we know is Death Magnetic, and I think it's because it was mastered differently or mastered separately. James has gone on to say that because, uh, by the way, none of these have really been played live except for the one time at the 30th anniversary shows. Right, uh, Hell and Back made it into the set for about 15 shows, but yeah, uh, he, you know, James went on to say like. He said that it was similar to Reload in the sense that these aren't throwaways or leftovers or B-sides. Um, <clears throat> I think that's maybe true for half of it for me. I think maybe right, you yeah. like more of, them than, more of them for that than me, but 
I, I don't think I would want anything on Death Magnetic to go away to make room for these songs. I think if I, I mean, let's do this. If you had to pick one song to go away on Death Magnetic and replace it with one off of Beyond Magnetic, I would probably get rid of Suicide and Redemption. And yeah. I would probably put either, it's, to me, it's a t- t- the toss-up between Hate Train and, and Rebel of Babylon. Yeah, I, I'm so glad you said Suicide Redemption because I, I was sure you were going to say the Judas Kiss and it was going to it was going to butt hurt me. <laughs> you, you, your butt wouldn't your butt wouldn't have been crossed anymore. I'd have to uncross my butt to receive the steamroller action wound. Yeah, that would yeah, God, that would hurt. Yeah, yeah, I would take off Suicide Redemption too, and I would probably add Rebel of Babylon. Yeah, but we are getting ahead of ourselves. So let's 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 dive into Hate Train. Here's a little bit of Hate Train. Yeah. Here we go. This is our track by track. Track by track. Here are my here are my initial notes. I wrote badass intro feels like classic Metallica. It does. It definitely does. It it, it, it does come out of the gate super strong. Um, yeah, bitch and riffs gets kind of fast. Um, and I think I think the execution, the way they played it, is is really good and tight. Um, when I first heard it, it got me excited for these extra songs. Me too. And one thing you, I can definitely say about these EPs is that they're just filled with great riffs. Just fucking filled with them. Filled. Yes. Uh, the, the only thing that, that strikes me off the bat that I would be critical of is I don't know if we need a Kirk Hammett solo at the top of the song. Uh, it, yeah, I agree um, with you partially. Um, it, it, it also it reminded me of kind of old school Metallica where that has happened on, on previous records. Like on yeah, Kill what was Mall it? Or, was it a No Remorse or Phantom Lord? One of those kind of starts with a guitar um, no, solo. No Remorse did. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what uh crap there's another b-side i'm blanking off the top of my head right now that, that had it too um on uh, Kill Mall? no 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 it was like uh during justice was it the prince or bread fan no bread fan oh one of the b-sides oh, okay I think that's uh, Symphony of Destruction. <laughs> I think it's Symphony of Destruction. I think you're right. Um. <laughs> oh my God! The Reddit, the Reddit guy just shit his pants. Yeah, <laughs> that's Mega Death, dude. Dude, um, what the hell, man? You're right. They don't do it a lot, so maybe it is kind of cool that it's just, it's that kind of waggy octave thing, and then it's kind of a shred thing. And I guess I, I am like kind of a traditionalist in the sense that let's let's get to that first verse and chorus before we yeah. o- open up the old guitar razor blades yeah but i mean maybe their goal with these four songs were like <clears throat> even longer than the record and they just say hey, the fuck it, let's throw a solo at the beginning too yeah although i guess in well, the in, in in as a whole if you included these with that you know with death, death magnetic in that session maybe when they were recording this song it was like hey we don't have one song that starts with a solo yet let's throw one in here you know right who knows what they what, what their, their process was back then but um it you know could we do without it probably does it bother me that much nah yeah, well, and it's it is that same kind of Kirk. Uh, you know, if you've heard our Death Magnetic episode, you've heard us talk at length about how excited we are about Kirk's guitar playing at this, in this era. So I will say this: you know, he sounds great. The solos are cool; they're fast and yeah. tight, and and very it's not, unique a, too. not a lot of not a lot of sloppy Joe stuff. It's pretty pretty bitching. Yeah, agreed. And some of the riffs in Hate Train are. Did you notice this? They kind of like sound like fuel. There's a lot of the brown, a brown, a bound, a bound, a bound. Yeah, bound. totally. Which I, which I, you know, any any hat tips to that era, I love. Of course, yeah. I mean, this would have been ten years later. There's a lot of stuff on on, on this song. I mean, really, the whole EP in general, but on this song too, that like uh, they they, they kind of go into that territory of how I describe Hardwired, where there's a lot of pulls from different era of Metallica in just one song. Oh, this riff right. reminds me of Load, this li- Reload. This riff reminds me of Kill 'Em All, all, all through their catalog. So I, I, that's why I, I really enjoy the riffs on this on this song and EP. Yeah. One of the on one of the other like critical notes I have, and this is true for the whole EP, not just um, Hate Train, but 
it, and it's the pro, it's the sort of the problem of death magnetics. It, and so some people may think that this is the sound of it. Some people, whatever. But you know, the vocals are just so dry. Mm-hmm, they are, and the and the drums are so loud. Mm-hmm. Like I, I wish it was mixed with a little more, t, a little more of that Greg Fiddleman or Bob Rock TLC. You know. Yeah, totally. You know, what would be a fun idea, just like in in, in our downtime, is to Im, like import th- these songs and Death Magnetic into Logic. Like find the unmastered versions. Do a little bit of mastering, but then add a little bit of like overall reverb to the stereo track, and see yeah. if see if it like makes a difference. So I mean, it would make a difference, obviously, but see if we like it better or worse. It might be kind of a fun experiment to do, and then maybe share it with our listeners. Well, and I need to <clears throat> actually need to check and see. One of our listeners sent us, uh, actually, a few of them have sent us the the stems from Death Magnetic from the from the game that they oh, made from Guitar Hero, yeah, from Guitar Hero, and. Uh, <clears throat> All the vocals are like on their own channel, so I wonder if we can mm-hmm. even do like a kind of like a mix like that. I don't know if the the uh, Beyond Magnetic tunes are on there. Uh, here, so I love that down chorus, the "You Took Away Tomorrow" chorus. Yes, very Unforgiven Three ish. I love that because the song is pretty heavy and pretty fast at times, and then it it was kind of a surprise when I first heard the song. They went to a down chorus like on track one of this thing. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and it's it's a really kind of like emotional sounding lyric, and mm-hmm. it's just, it's a great moment for there to be a little bit more delay or reverb on his voice exactly yeah i 100 percent agree with that um but it's just that kind of it's that death magnetic sauce you know it is for sure <clears throat> there's a cool solo i like the solo but there's a i actually have this in there i wonder if we can even put a clip of it but he does this like ambulance lick yeah it gets faster and faster that's pretty much the exact same lick from my apocalypse it is, yeah, and it kind of <clears throat> bums me out. Kind of rips him, rips himself off, which you know is permissible, of course. But That's the part of the solo he starts with that thing, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, he, well, he, yeah, he starts. He, he's, it's the solo after the third verse of Hate Train. So yeah, he does right, a solo. Right, right, yeah. Then there's like a third verse, and then he starts. The, it's at like five minutes and thirty seconds. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a cool yeah. sound. It's just weird that it's kind of like on the same record you know it's yeah. like the same the same family of songs yeah i mean maybe it was another one of those tricks kirk was doing kind of like when he does his like goes down right. the fretboard really fast he does that on like 10 metallica songs or shouldn't have shouldn't have shouldn't have shouldn't have you know what you sound like you were saying shouldn't have that's what i thought you were saying i was saying shouldn't have yeah shouldn't have uh what were you saying shouldn't have yeah, like you were saying, like shouldn't have done it, you know, like shouldn't have, yeah, shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have. I'm saying shouldn't have, shouldn't have. Oh, okay, yeah, I thought you were saying shouldn't have. There. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have. Yeah, it's a, it's kind, it's an exact science almost about how to sing guitar parts. Yeah, we're still, we're still you know, getting it down. I think we're going to take some courses this winter. We're still, well, we're actually writing the textbook, so. Yeah, we are. That's true. Uh, I will say, uh, hate train. It, I like which I like it. You guys just heard me talk about it. It's probably my least favorite of the four. It feels really it's not even it's not even the longest song on the EP, but it feels the longest to me. Okay, it's Actually, about seven is, minutes long, and towards the end they just keep stacking riffs and different left turns, and I'm just kind yeah, of yeah, like, they do. Let's wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I wouldn't say this is my least favorite, but okay, that's yours. All right, uh, all right. Here, here's uh, let's talk about just a bullet away. <laughs> To blow it away. Um, maybe my least favorite chorus on this EP. Hmm. Suck. <laughs> it, what's crazy about that, the chorus is, I don't, when has the chorus for Metallica ever been over such an intense riff? Yeah, that's you true. You know what I mean? It's like I this kind of climby, intense, fast riff. Yeah. I agree. I don't love. I don't love the chorus either. Just, I mean, I, I like his execution. I like his, I like his passion and his voice. The anger in his voice, but just the, the lyrics are kind of like, uh, really suck, suck, suck until it's dry. Yeah, suck. Yeah, and I, again with the with the effects that are on his vocals, I, the the whole like uh, the shine of a midnight revolver. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to hear him say that at the end of every verse. Like I think like that gets repeated too much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a little bit kind of like what don't kill you make you more strong vibe. 
Right, where it just keeps going and, and, and the it's, way it's he unnecessary. Sa- and the way he says revolver, it sounds like he's saying revival. Revival. Shut up, I'm in that revival. Yeah, for sure. But it, I mean, the riffs in the song are cool. The, the, the song has a great feel to it. It does. The riffs <clears throat> are um, fucking awesome. Yeah, there, there's. In, uh, if you're listening to this and you haven't actually heard these songs, like, please do yourself a favor and listen to them because there's some really good stuff on here that I wish was on Death Magnetic, but I'm glad we ha- we actually have it. Uh, yeah, my, one of my biggest takeaways from the whole thing was like, if you like Metallica, you're gonna like this shit. I mean, this oh, yeah. is straight up through and through Metallica. Absolutely, for sure. So it's nothing but good news. Uh, I will say they've only done it once again. At, on they did it this one on uh, December seventh at the thirtieth anniversary shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like this one better live. Like they kind of, they're kind of in it a little more live. And, yeah, uh, for sure. It comes off better, especially the vocal problems that I have with it on the recording mm-hmm. are a little more smoothed over live. Yeah, and for those that don't know, when they did the thirtieth anniversary shows, they did one of these songs every night. Right. Well, and that was when they kind of dropped the bomb. They were they, because I don't think fan the only. Th- Bits of these songs fans had heard before they played them live at those shows at the Fillmore. Uh, what, do you remember the Submission Metallica thing? Yes, I was I was kind of offline then. But when they were making Death Magnetic, they had this thing called Mission Metallica, which were daily video updates from the studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so people <clears throat> yeah, had heard those. so people had heard little snips and pieces of these songs through the Mission Metallica shit. Yes, so it was a pretty big treat when they were like, "Hey, first of all, we're going to play these songs for you each night." And I think the week after those shows, they made it available for like iTunes. Or yeah, w- which is very cool. I mean, put that on the chalkboard is another reason why Metallica loves their fans and how you know we're grateful for that. Because is it a is it a chalkboard or is it a dry erase board? Do I have options here? Um, well, I mean, we'll call it a dry erase board. Like you know, what they use in the studio for their track listing and what they're <laughs> what they're recording and marking off. And I mean, I'll use a chalkboard. Just don't run your fing- fingernails against it. Hey, speaking of classic Metallica, how about the middle section to the song where it, it, it strips down and there's kind of that clean part and the guitar harmony? Yes. It's one of my favorite cool. moments on the whole EP. Yes, very cool. Yeah, the guitar harmony part is really cool. Um, it's just a beauty. Yeah, it's, it's one of those beautiful parts. That I did, again, kind of like you know the, cor- the down course of Hey Train, I'm just a bold way. Like, I didn't expect that to kind of come out of the song. Yeah, it's and have very this dynamic. Part. It's very cool. Mm-hmm, definitely. Uh, obviously a song about suicide. That's pretty dark subject matter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you have, when you find out it's about suicide and the song's called Just a Bullet Away, it's like, ooh, wow, that is, <clears throat> that's heavy stuff. But I mean, Redfield's about- uh, always, you know, he's always been known to write from either his heart or from experience or from, even if it's fictional, you know, he's he's always writing from a deep, deep place and very well, meaningful yeah. place. And, he, you know, he was writing under the, you know, the title... Title of the record's Death Magnetic, so yeah. these are all the themes, and it would very much fit in thematically with Death Magnetic, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Someone who's drawn to suicide. Uh, right. Helen Back, what do you think? Helen Back is very cool. Um, this might be my least favorite. It's my I second don't, favorite. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. I feel like that kind of cool, ominous intro thing. I feel like it's not stuff they've done a lot before. It, it yeah. sounds kind of different and new to me for them, which is, you know, that's nice. And and, and I would say that uh, an intro like that that is something that they they don't really do is another reason why I would love to hear a track like this on Death Magnetic. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, they've done experimental stuff, but this was a lot different than what you're used to hearing for a Metallica intro, so... See, I would I would like to see this one go in place of Suicide and Redemption because I feel like um, we get such a like barn burner in My Apocalypse mm-hmm. that I would like for the one right before it to be kind of a more... kind of more dynamic, starts down... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it kind of... it. it, it it would be more of a journey instead of like hate train's kind of a ball buster too, except for that chorus. Well, maybe hate train would be good there. Yeah. I'm kind of talking myself out of the very thing I'm saying right now. (laughs) 
No, I mean, I think overall, I mean, Hell and Back is a, re- I mean, it's a really good song. I, I, I hate saying that it's my least favorite on this, but, but you know, it's, it's tough when there's only four tracks on the whole damn thing. Well, there's got to be one, you know. It has to be one. Always has to be one. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's not to say that it's a great song. It has great riffs and there's good feel in the song and the dynamics of this song I love. Um, I, I feel like it, I feel like a lot, a lot of the parts in the song, they were really stretching themselves and trying some new random things. Yeah, I think so too. And that may be one of the reasons that it didn't quite make it to the actual record is maybe they were being a little more experimental with these yeah the but, solo's great the subject yeah. matter is pretty you know i i take this song to be about his alcohol addiction mm-hmm. yeah I, w- I would think so when she starts calling i feel my darkness grow within and i, I'll, I go straight to hell and back when i'm alone and yeah. all that stuff heavy stuff man pretty heavy how interesting is it though that this is the one that kind of lived like they've played this song live more than they've played unforgiven three Wow, they that's crazy. They played this song yeah. 16 times live. 16 times, okay. Well, I mean, I, you know, you, you can only imagine that uh, lyric content like this might be really, have been at the time especially really important to Hetfield. Right. Really attached to this song, really attached to what he wrote. And I'm, I wouldn't doubt that he headed that up, that, hey, I want to keep playing this, you know, up to 16 times, whatever his decision was. Um, you know, just to sing it out to fans maybe that are struggling with the same thing he struggled with. Maybe he felt it was something that fans needed to hear more live um, in that regard. But uh, well, you can the the uh, the Met Boys, uh, the Met Club people over at their HQ or whatever, they've released a, I think one or two, definitely one of the um, like an official Met video of them doing it at the Rock M Ring. Oh, nice festival. Yeah. And it's it's worth checking out because you know they, they they mixed those well and it's big mick and it's loud and good and they seem real comfortable with it. Yeah, the thirtieth anniversary shows are actually kind of rough shows for me because the voc is vocally James isn't great and they they're, it's just kind of the nature of it's more loosey goosey. Yeah, yeah, but the, it's the, cool the, seeing Helen back like on a big deck at a real show. Yeah, where they've got it really dialed in. Yeah, I actually haven't seen that version of it at Rock Am Ring, but I need to check that out. Is it called Rock Am Ring? <clears throat> rock uh, I've done both those festivals um, usually people call them rock am ring or rock am ring either one I've heard both I always called it's them rock real, am ring rock am park it's real not easy to say it's real not am easy to say <laughs> All right, and, last. and king thinks that you can say it however you want <laughs> king <laughs> uh, rebel of Babylon Rebel, grip your bottle tight, just float away. Rebel, is it hard to leave? What makes you stay? Go take your poison ink, sign life away. Then take your dirty spoon and dig your grave. Dig your grave Love it um, I do too It's, it's tough. my favorite it, Yeah I think it is my favorite And you know what I don't mind the length See that's what I'm saying It's um, really really long It's the longest it's, one on this EP But like Like you know when it goes to that down part in the middle And it almost sounds like a wholly different song yeah, well, I, I wrote, I love the mellow droning down thing. Yeah. I, even even today when I was re-listening to this, when that happened, in my head I thought, oh, this is the next track. Yeah. Even though it was the last well, track still. And I was, oh, wait, no, no, it's not. Well, there's like seven or eight major sections to this song. Mm-hmm. My, my only my only thing I wonder, I mean, I, I'll take Rebel of Babylon as it is any day. I'm, I'm fine with it. But I yeah. wonder if like it could have been made into two two songs. Like, Probably, I mean, take take four of the riffs and put it in this one, and three of the other because they're all such good moments. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the boys are you know, especially Lars and James are known for compiling all these riffs that James writes and stuff, and kind of piecing things together. Like, oh, this would fit good with this. You know, I feel like they did that nine times on this one song. Um, well, it's, and that's which is also kind of classic Metallica because there's a lot is. of me, there's a lot of meter change too. Yes, which is very it's, cool. It's they haven't cool. done they haven't done a ton of that over the years. No. There's um, not even really a ton of that on Hardwired. Yeah, totally. There's not a, there's not a ton of these left turns because some of the riffs are real load reloadish. 
Mm -hmm. Some of them are kind of thrashy. Yeah. Definitely. Um, oh, there's some really good thrash stuff on this one. Some kill them all type shit. He says uh, at, after they play it uh, on that 30th anniversary show, they played it on the 5th. Yeah. Uh, James actually says, he says, uh, people ask us what the lyrical inspiration for Death Magnetic uh, is. And he said in particular Rebel of Babylon, he actually was thinking about Lane Staley. Wow. And, I don't and, remember, uh, remember seeing that. Wow, it's crazy. And Because there's that lyric that's take your dirty spoon and dig your grave. Wow. wow. And he talks about like our fallen brothers and sisters in rock and roll and people who get sort of caught up in the life. And, uh-huh, and yeah, take totally. I mean, he, he he meant it from a, a, a nice place, but the song course, takes yeah. a pretty br- brutal stance on it. The song, there's a lot of anger in the song. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, you know, I mean, when, when, when it comes to something like that with someone so close to you that like takes their life like that, you know, a guy like Lane Staley, where it was very dark, where he was gone and dead in his apartment for two weeks before anybody found him. It was right. It's it's I would imagine as someone who was close to that guy, it's hard not to be angry at the same time sure. as you're sad. Like, like, how could you do this to we all love you? You know, um, well, so I've got friends it, it who struggle. Who, I've got friends who struggle with addiction. Maybe not heroin, but it is it is a tough spot to be in when you feel mm-hmm. helpless. Yeah. You really can't help someone you really care about. Yeah, totally. I think anger is pretty a healthy part of that. For sure, yeah. Well, man, I would yeah. say go, sorry, I would say if if I had to rank the record, it would be just the opposite of the track list: Rebel of Babylon, Hell and Back, Bullet Away, Hate Train. That would be my order. I think I'd do Rebel of Babylon, Hate Train, just to Bullet Away, Hell and Back. And you would give up suicide and redemption for for the one. Where would you put some of these if you if because you know Death Magnetic's only ten ten tracks. I, I could I, see I putting two of these on without having to take anything away. Fourteen may be a stretch, but yeah, um, man, yeah. Uh, hey, I mean, Hate Train could 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 definitely be like towards the top of the record for sure. I was gonna say, or maybe like track one of side B, you know. Yeah, because it's a it's a great opener on this. Because it's a good opener, yeah. Yeah, and that's always a good way to think about records too. I know a lot of bands that are kind of like old school and have been around for a long time when they're when they were still vinyl was in its heyday. A lot of bands order their record. My bands have done this. Whether you're doing vinyl or not, they order it like a side A and a side B, and I'm sure Metallica does that too. Oh yeah, I recently watched uh, uh, at a Pearl Jam show on the Lightning Bolt tour in Milwaukee. Just so they sort of randomly played the whole Yield record. Front to yeah. back in the in the middle of their set. That's so cool. And when they got to whatever the song is, MFC or wish list, whatever, Eddie actually said in the microphone, "All right, let's flip to the you know flip the record." Yeah, let's play you side know, he, B. He just he made an allusion to it, even just live because he. That's you know, so bad. That's so bad. Which badass. I come from that school too. I mean, I I definitely still see records as sides. I still like to listen to records as a piece of music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, me too. In a sequence. Yep. I. Th- I don't think it's right or wrong, but I do think for you kids out there, it's a more rewarding experience because these people sit down and sequence records and do the car test and they listen to them and a lot of thought and care goes into the sequence of a record. Yeah, for most sure. Of, most of the time. You know what could be a cool little insert for Death Magnetic with two of these songs is uh, is after all, at the end of side A, after All Nightmare Long, uh, you could put Helen back right there and, yeah. then, and then start side A with Hate Train. Yeah. Little little beyond magnetic sandwich right there with death magnetic bread. <laughs> I think I'd eat that. Mm, I'm hungry suddenly. Uh, is it vegan? That's my only question. Well, what you do? It... I don't know if I know the voice really anymore. <laughs> well, what uh, what you do is you put a uh, beyond magnetic in it, and then you put the sandwich. It's like bread with the death magnetic bread on the side. But you don't put meat on it. No, you put seitan and you put uh, tofu, but uh, you don't do the, the meat. I just want to know, is the bread gluten-free? Uh, there's absolutely no gluten was used, and no animals were harmed at the making of the death, uh, the death slash beyond Baghdadi sandwich. Great. I will listen, listen to it and eat it for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a breakfast sandwich, huh? Uh, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with eating dinner for breakfast or breakfast for dinner, man. We're anarchists no. here. We'll do whatever the fuck we want, man. When I was a kid and I would come in and I would see that my mom was making breakfast for dinner, I would get so pissed off because I felt like it was, it was a ripoff. Really? Dude, I was the opposite. If my mom was like, or dad was like, uh, you guys want some eggs and toast and bacon for dinner? We're like, oh my God, we're getting breakfast for dinner. This is amazing. This is the greatest night of my life. It's the best thing to ever happen to me. Eggs for dinner. <laughs> should, we, should we talk about what we got coming up? Do we even know what's coming up? Uh, I, I not we don't really have much of a game plan. I mean, we know that we got a St. Anger episode coming up soon. We have to set a date for release that one. But um, 
Yeah, it's been, it's, uh, I think as we talked about before, I, uh, I went to California for almost a week to visit my grandpa I was in the hospital. And so things were kind of hectic. And from right there, I went straight into like rehearsals and tour. And so Clint and I haven't really gotten able to sit down and like kind of plan out some stuff here. So, but I kind of like that because I like the element of surprise and I'm, I like being able to, you know, surprise our fans with some cool content. The element of the surprise. Element of the surprise when I swoop down on my carpet and surprise you from behind <laughs> and say, hello, it's Torben. Well, then we'll just end by reiterating some of the stuff from the top. If you want a shot at winning that uh, the Master Pub is Deluxe box set, all you got to do is head over to iTunes, leave us a positive review. It's quick. It's easy. It's beautiful. Breezy, beautiful gorgeous. cover, girl. Uh, Mate, it's gorgeous. If you would like to interact with us throughout the week, we're on Twitter and we're on uh, Facebook, Facebook and Instagram. All that crap. Hash, all hashtag, that business. Hashtag socials. Uh-huh. Hashtag it. Hashtag, hashtag eggs. Social hashtag vegan socials. Send us an email at Metal Up Your Show. Oh, God damn it. Metal, Metal Up, up Your Show. show. Oh, Send us an email at podjam.com. Podjam up your show cast org gov. <laughs> All right. It's Metal Up Your Podcast Show at gmo.com. We'll read it on the thing. And uh, check out the Patreon if you want access to all the good, fun stuff that will yes, make your please. life happier and better. Yeah. And as usual, for all of you who listen every week, Gosh, we sure do appreciate it. We do. Very much so. And we can't thank you enough for always supporting us. And we'll see you next week, guys, right? Uh, Yeah, all right. Peace. Adios. <laughs> if you were our advisor, what would you say? Then I would say, delete that. <laughs> <laughs>